What is your I dodged a bullet moment? When I was in Guyana visiting family, we were supposed to go to Keocha Falls, and the only way to get there was by a small plane. Two days before we were supposed to go, a distant aunt of mine died, and the funeral was the day we were supposed to go. So we went to the funeral and turns out the plane we were supposed to be on crashed killing 4 people. TL. Doctor went to a funeral and avoided my own funeral. Almost got kidnapped in a mall when I was 5 and separated from my mom. Guy just grabbed my hand and led me to the exit. I was stunned initially but started screaming when we neared the exit and he panicked and let go. Still freaks me out to think what would have happened if that hadn't deterred him. When I was 15 years old I was suffering from dizzy spells and constant tiredness. They figured I had some kind of anemia. I had a blood test done on me and they found an abnormally highly white blood cell count. This usually meant one of two death sentences. Leukemia or sickle cell anemia. Turns out I had a one in a million third option. Genetically I have much denser bones than a normal person. The doctor was suspicious of this when it took such an abnormally long time to get a bone marrow sample. Usually it's done in 5 minutes. It took him nearly 20 to jam the needle into my sternum. Denser bones meant accounted for higher white blood cell count. I was and remained to do date over 30 years later. Perfectly healthy. A girl I went on two dates with ended up stabbing her next boyfriend two months later. I didn't follow up after two dates cause I got a weird vibe. Never been happier about that gut instinct. I didn't actually dodge a bullet. The bullet dodged all of my internal organs. Doctors told me if it hit me anywhere else in the chest I would have died. I used to be engaged and made a lot more money than my then fiance. She had a son and we planned on having children together, so I was supportive when she talked to me about quitting her job, New York City teacher, to be a stay at home mom. It made a lot of sense. She ended up quitting her job at the end of the year, but a couple of weeks into summer she offhandedly mentions how she wants to look into hiring a full time babysitter for her son. I asked if she was going back to work in the fall, but she said no. She just wanted someone to watch her son from roughly when I left for work until I came home. I pointed out the whole point of leaving her job to be a stay at home mom was to do that very thing. I already paid people to clean the home, do the landscaping and vacuum the pool while I did most of the cooking. It's not like I expected a whole lot. We ended up fighting a lot about this over the next couple of weeks until we broke off the engagement and broke up altogether. She's still friendly with my friends, wife slash girlfriends and I've since learned she married a guy who basically works 24 over 7 to keep her in a life of luxury. Under bombardment in Baghdad in 2004. A Chinese made Katasha rocket landed 30 feet away and blew me up. I stood up, dusted myself off, and discovered I was completely unhurt. As I was marveling at this, I watched another rocket come in. I knew from its parabola that my luck was up and stood rooted to the spot, horrified, as it came down nose first about 5 feet away from me. I've never been so certain that my life was over. It failed to explode. Ex-husband and I chickened out of buying a house around 2005. Not a story about me, but a friend. He drives trucks for a living. And his job is to visit construction sites and load his truck with their dumpster. One time, while walking on site, a piece of metal fell from the roof of one of the buildings. And it grazed the front of his face. He needed stitches and has a scar. But boy was he lucky. Even cashed in on the accident. I keep thinking about how the slightest change in his day could have either killed him or left him completely unscathed. Talk about dodging a bullet. I volunteered for airborne school when I was in the army years ago. On my first official jump in school, I somehow managed flip forwards in my parachute harness and my chute deployed completely ducked up. What we call a cigar roll. This causes to shoot to deploy all rolled up and it gets no air. I free fell for a second before coming to my senses and pulling my reserve. Most terrifying day of my life and I still had 4 more jumps to get through that week to graduate. Left a new year party at a friend's house. Right after I passed through a highway intersection some lady blew through the red light doing almost twice the limit. 
then smashed into one of those construction notice boards that was on the median. Turned out she was very drunk. Had a few other driving offenses recently despite her license being revoked. And had her 5 year old kid in the car. If I'd been just a little later she would have hit me on the driver side of my car. Before I moved here, I got stuck in Boston overnight in the heavy rain with nowhere to stay. My phone was dead, so I couldn't call anyone or use the Maps app. And as anyone who's ever been to Boston can attest, the whole city basically shuts down after 2am. Unfamiliar with public transport, I got on the last train that I hoped would take me to my friend outside of the city. But at the last second I realized the train was going in the opposite direction. Ended up asking this girl where I was, which she then responded to with do you not have anywhere to go tonight? Come with me. So I followed her in a daze. Not really sure what was happening. She was absolutely gorgeous so I was sure I was about to get mugged. She took me to her house. Blew up an air mattress and let me use her spare phone charger. The next morning I thanked her profusely and offered money. But she just smiled and waved it off. We said our goodbyes and I left. I still don't know her name. TL. Doctor. Kindest stranger I've ever met saved me from sleeping overnight on a bench in the middle of a rainy city. A girl I dated my senior year in college and was absolutely smitten with didn't treat me well and did a really good job of stringing me along while still hooking up with her ex-boyfriend. She's now a three-time divorced single mom who posts a lot of minion memes on Facebook. When I was younger I used to skip school. I would hide in the garage till my parents left and then go back in the house. One day I was in there waiting for them to leave and I thought they had already when I heard their footsteps approaching the garage door. This had never ever happened before as they always just got in their cars and ran. Anyway I crept to the door to listen closer but they started messing with the lock. I ran out the back, the other side of the garage, out into the garden and into the bushes. My heart was pounding. When about half hour later I dared to look back, I couldn't see anyone. I went inside, and the place was trashed. My parents had left at the normal time. We had been burglarized, and I had stood maybe 6 inches from the burglar on the other side of the door and run for it. Except I thought it was one of my parents. This event happened in the early 90s. I don't know which year exactly, but my country was at war with a neighboring country. Peas, I'm from the Middle East. Anyway, one night we were watching TV in our 6th floor apartment and there is a huge glass door next to it. My mom and dad and I were sitting facing the TV. My brother was sitting at an angle on a couch next to the TV, so he had to bend his body to avoid the TV glare and see. We kept telling him you are blocking the view move back. Thank god he didn't listen to us, because at one point a small missile came through the glass door and shattered it to pieces and hit the wall behind our sofa. The whole apartment was in pieces. No one was harmed. But it was traumatizing for my parents and for me and my brother. We had to evacuate the apartment and go live with other relatives for some time. Holy shit. You quite literally dodged a ducking missile. As I would learn much later in life. When my mother and father were giving me up for adoption my aunt really wanted me. My B.O. mom told me years later she got really hunky vibes for her. So she said. No way and opted for a traditional, private, anonymous adoption. Years later, that aunt's daughter became a drug addict. So the aunt got custody of her grandkids. Mom got her shit together and wanted them back. Grandma murdered all four of them. I dodged a serious ducking bullet before I was even born. I was born in Kuwait a year before the first Persian Gulf War. During the occupation of Kuwait me and my family were fleeing Kuwait through Iraq to Jordan on a bus at some random checkpoint in the desert. A few Iraqi soldiers got into the bus hoping to get whatever valuables the passengers had. One of the soldiers decided to duck with my dad and pick one year old me up and walk away and tell the bus to keep moving. My dad crying begged and pleaded with them to hand me back because they didn't have anything else to give them. After a couple minutes the guy started laughing and handed me back to my dad and we hopped back on the bus. Not sure if this even belongs here. I was in a head on crash in a Honda Prelude. The other drivers was drunk and was driving at 180 km per hour. I was doing about 50 and swerving. Obviously. Crushed ribs and broken feet. 
Weeks later when I was out of hospital I went to see the wreckage of my car and the assessor said that if I had not swerved as much as I did, the engine block would have been driven through my seat and killed me instantly. But if I had served any more than I did the other car would have impacted directly on the driver's door and gone through it, killing me instantly. He said I managed to find the 5 degree angle of impact where I would survive the accident. I was searching my pockets for the keys to the front door of the building I was living in at the time and a friend, who had given me a ride home, shouted at me from the car because I had forgotten something inside. The moment I got to the car, part of the stone facade of the building fell exactly where I had been a few seconds prior. My family were looking for houses for us to move into. We had to in mind, and almost picked one. But in the end, decided that we would go in the one we currently live in. Three years ago a large tree fell into what would have been my room on the house we decided against. My mum still gets out the photo of the partially destroyed house on special anecdotal occasions. Looking back, I didn't use condoms very much when I really should have. I once had sex with a seriously crazy girl who instructed me not to use a condom. I have neither herpes or a baby. I got really lucky. It was not too serious though. When I was in college and under 21, I was going to go out with some friends to a house party. While I was busy playing World of Warcraft and decided I would meet them later on where the party would be and skip pre-gaming. Well when they walked from my friend's house to the party they carried the beer with them. A undercover cop stopped them and sighted them all. I ended up walking past all of them sitting on the curb while the cop was taking their info. I can say, World of Warcraft did one thing productive in my life. I was fostered as a teenager, and when I turned 15 I went to a sort of youth group for foster kids to hang out, learn life skills, that kind of thing. One day, we'd been out for a trip to the cinema I think, and because social services suck here, they dumped us off in town, rather than take us near our homes. I walked to a crossing, and because there's like no traffic I don't press the button for the lights and just start crossing it, which was odd, because it was 6pm and usually busy, I get as far as one foot off the pavement, and leaning forward to begin walking. When a thought strikes me, I should probably press the button just in case. I lean back, and reach to press it, right as I do, an ambulance with no lights or siren blasts through at like 50 miles per hour. All this happened in like one second. Lean forward. Foot out. Hold on. Lean back. Ducking ambulance out to nowhere. This is why I take so long crossing roads. Being an ex-junkie leaves you with a lot of these stories. My personal worst is when I was spending some time with the dealers down the block from me. Partly to re-up and partly just BC we were friends. I started nodding out a little and started getting kind of a weird vibe. So I stumbled my way back down to the street to my house. Woke up the next morning to sex, lights all down the street. Apparently not too long, after I'd left some tweaker tried to rob the place then started shooting. He and two of my buddies died. After full season baseball practice, three of my teammates and I hopped into a buddy's Ford Bronco to go and play our favorite full sport Maple Leaf Roundup. We would drive down Maple Avenue, aptly named, and cruise down the street looking for the largest leaf pile on the block. Then. If no one was coming, we would drive into the pilot breakneck speed, causing an explosion of leaves and awesomeness. On this particular Friday afternoon, we were about to demolish this huge pile, and we saw a lady backing her car out of the driveway across the street from the pile. So we sounded the abort, warning, and slowed down to make another pass. As we got right up next to the pile, a kid and his black lab jumped out of the leaf, pile, and onto their lawn. I still get goosebumps when I remember how close we all were to changing many lives in a matter of seconds. My buddy, who was driving, actually threw up in the parking lot when we got back to school. It is something I can never forget. Sif. Not me but my sister. My parents found a nice housing development in 1996 where they wanted to move to. However, at the last minute a new development was being built at a better location for commuting purposes. So we moved there. The first development world districted my sister to Columbine High School where she world been a freshman in 1998 and 1999. I'm late. So no one will ever see it. But I'll say it anyway. 
my friend's mom was pregnant, and on her way to Chernobyl in April 1986, she was refused a boarding pass to the plane, because her doctor's note was from a naturopath, which they wouldn't accept. So no trip. I always thought that was crazy. My college rumor dodged a bullet fired by me. He took me out shooting for the first time in a field near our school, but didn't really show me proper gun safety, or show me how this particular gun worked. He went to set a target back up, and I was messing with the rifle, when it went off. It was probably aimed about 5 to 10 degrees away from him, when it went off. I still get chills thinking about it, and it was 20 years ago. Edit, just for clarification 1, I didn't mean to put all the blame on my friend. It was both of our faults in this scenario. 2. We were firing a lever action rifle. So while he was setting up the target I chambered another round by working the lever. And then for whatever reason I wanted to let the hammer back down. So I held the hammer with my thumb and pulled the trigger. The hammer slipped and still had enough travel in it to fire the round. Somebody was trying to rob me for my phone when I was a freshman in high school. So I took off running and he shot at me. And when I went home I noticed there was a bullet hole in my book bag. Thank goodness I was a great student, because those books saved my life. Things began to go south with an ex of mine. It was a very subdued and slow breakup. And towards the end she admitted she initially tried to trick me into getting her pregnant so I'd stay. Yep. Seriously. She moved on quickly, and began dating another guy. He got her pregnant within like 3 months. Good for them. 10 years old. A friend and I talked to a man about a local kid that is missing slash runaway in our apartment complex. My friend goes home. I talk a while more. Give my home phone number. This is around 1982. Johnny calls my house later. My mom talks a bit. Confused. My parents later tell me if Johnny calls back to agree to meet him behind a restaurant that backs up to our apt complex. He calls. Arrange to meet. Johnny asks if I want to take a ride in his new car, old VW bug with template. My dad, actual tough guy, comes out from behind the fence, tells me to go home. Dad was going to kick ass. But Johnny was a pathetic whimpering puss. So sad just scared him. Called cops. Nothing they could do. No crime committed. Fast forward a few weeks. Johnny is on the news getting arrested for kidnapping a 10 year old boy. That looks a lot like me. Sweet. Please subscribe and leave a like if you enjoyed this video and if you want to see more of reddit universe.